Cheers from Japan. I'm the Tokyo Toy Bastard, and I've got another giant bag of junk. This time, it's all vintage, baby. 80s and 90s toys, from what I can tell. Uh, and I found this bag of junk not at Hobby Off like I did last time. I found this on Yahoo Auctions Japan. Uh, it was all just in a big pile, kind of scattered around. I could see some things. I could make out some toys. Uh, and I saw some things in particular, which you can kind of see here. They're in my wheelhouse of things that I like to collect. And there was some stuff in here that I was missing too. So I went ahead and put in a bid and I won this entire lot for about a thousand yen, about 10 bucks. And yeah, totally worth 10 bucks already just from seeing a couple of the figures in here. Um, although I'm not entirely sure how good of a shape they are in because some of them look pretty bad. But um, yeah, let's crack it open and see what we got inside. Well, it looks like we have three distinct bags here. Um, we've got a bag full of uh, Ultraman Sophobie. Uh All kind of looks like it's from the 80s and 90s. Nothing from the 70s or the 2000s, it seems, from what I can tell. But we'll go through those in a second. Um, I've got this bag of random stuff. It looks like uh, Super Sentai, oh, aka uh, uh, blah, 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 Power Rangers, uh, Dragon Ball, and yeah, oh yeah. And I even see some Dragon Quest and some robot stuff in here. But yeah, that's gonna be a fun one to open. Some other random junk in there. And then uh, this, this sorry excuse for a bag of Saint Seiya figures. There is something going on with these, but I guess we'll have to look closer after we open it up. Um, maybe let's save that one for last. Um, which, one sh which one should we go with first? Uh, let's go ahead and get through the Ultraman, because that just seems like it's, uh, it's going to be a lot of the same. So let's just go through that real fast. Uh, most of you guys that follow me know that I'm not an expert on Ultraman by any means i am starting to get into it uh mainly the classic ultraman i do not know all of the incarnations of ultraman and i only know a handful of the kaiju but it is something i'm interested in learning more about especially with uh shin ultraman coming up by the director of uh, shin godzilla and let's see let's get these laid out here all right so here's what we got in the lot That's a nice little assortment here. We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 different Ultraman figures. Uh, let's look at these first, these little these little ones in the front. All right, so this is definitely a pretty vintage. Uh, nice little mini Sophobi. And let's see who this is made by. This is made by, I don't know. It just says Ultraman. Oh, you can't see, sorry. It says Ultraman, uh, and then the copyright. So it doesn't actually have the maker on this one. This could be, it does have a B. This could be early Bandai, I'm not sure. If you know what Ultraman this is from, let me know. This could even be like one of the early Utaka sets. Uh, I'm not sure, I kind of, I really like this one though. This is, one, this is one I'm gonna keep once I get it cleaned up. So yeah, this, these are very dirty for sure. Uh, up next, we've got um, a Bolton. Uh, one of the few kaiju that I know from Ultraman. And uh, he looks like he's probably from the same set, maybe. He's uh, slightly shorter. Let's see. Is he had the copyright on him? Okay, his does say Bandai. Ooh, where's the camera at? Bandai 19... What does that say? 19... It looks like 1900. <laughs> uh, 1980-something or 90-something. Probably 90-something. 1990? I don't know. Let me know if you're if you let me know if you know. Um, is this the Ultraman father? Is he called like there's like father and mother, something like that? Horny, I call him Horny Ultraman. He's because he's got horns. Um, he does have the Bandai stamp very proudly stamped on his foot. I like that stamp. He's cool. Um, again, I'm not. I'm only kind of collecting the actual um, original Ultraman. So well, that's a cool little set there. Cool little little trio. 
All right, let's see what else we got here. I do, I do notice these two figures look like they are different from these other ones. So let's look at these real quick. These are actually um, hard plastic, uh, and they've got, look at that, they've got the trademark Utaka joints. These are definitely uh, Utaka figures, or Hardy Robin, or whatever the hell you want to call them. Uh, Utaka for sure, I think. Uh, let's see on the back. Do they have any markings? I mean, they have the same markings as the other set. So, I don't know if you can see it right there. It just says Ultraman, copyright, and then whatever the kanji is. Probably says Subaraya Productions, I'm guessing. Um, so, yeah, you've got these two guys. But, yeah, these are not these are not Safabi. These are articulated figures, uh, just like the uh, Yutaka Dragon Ball figures that I have, uh, which I talked about in my last video. Did I talk those? No, not the last one. The second to last one, because I reviewed the bootleg Safabi versions. So... These are kind of cool and unique. I uh, don't see these very often. So I'm wondering if uh, these were maybe packed together in some kind of set. So I, yeah, I'm assuming these are all Yutaka. So cool to have those. Uh, again, won't be keeping all of these. I will be putting up some of these for sale. I will be sending some of these to friends and then some of these I'll be letting my son play with. All right, let's just take like a grouping of three here. Oh, we can keep those together. All right, let's just put these in groups of three. Uh, I've got three different Ultramen. I don't know which one's which. This is your standard Ultraman. I don't know what this one is. I, I, I thought it was Ultimate 80, but I think that's not that. Ultimate 80 doesn't have that star in his head. Let me know which Ultraman these are. They're in pretty bad shape, but these are all soft vinyl. Uh, what does it say? 19. Man, the, like the last two digits, digits are really screwed up on these. 1993. I think these all say 1993. Good year. The year Jurassic Park came out. Uh, that, was a good, that was a good year for me. All right. Um, yeah, those. The value on these, I mean, these are pretty grody. So, like, these kinds of things here, these are basically just for kids to smash together. Then we've got these three, uh, more of the same, uh, same style, same year, I guess, probably. Oh, wait, this one. Yeah, these are both, um, that one looks like it says 1988. Can you see that? Sorry, I, I'm looking at it and not showing the camera. Can't quite tell. But this one right here, which needs some cleaning, uh, this one is 1984, it looks like. 1984. Bandai. So that's like very, very early Bandai. Around the same time that, uh, was it Yamakatsu was producing Godzilla figures? So that's cool. And then I believe this is Ultra Father and Mother. And I kind of I kind of dig these, and they're really big. And I think... Ultra Mother looks hilarious, uh, so uh, I think these are keepers for me out of this set. I will probably be keeping uh, maybe these or these right here. The rest, they're all going to people. Are the garbage? When were these made? No dates on the feet. Any dates on the butts? I got some dates here. Ah, uh, eighty-three. Can you see that? Let's see, 1983, I think that says. Can you see it? Let's see, maybe she's easier to see. Not her butt, sorry. 1983, I think, yeah. So these are, I was one year old when these were made. Cool. Keepers. Hi, Mom and Dad. All right, let's get to the bag that has all the Dragon Ball goodies. Let's dump this out. I know you guys were waiting for this bag, I'm sure. There we go. Um, let's part this out. Wow. Okay, that's interesting. Now let me come back after I parted these out. Okay, kind of picked through them here and got them arranged in some kind of order so I could talk about them. Uh, the first item in here was kind of on its own. Uh, it's some kind of samurai transformer thing. Don't know. Not a transformer guy. Uh, but yeah, it looks like maybe a beast former or something. I don't know. Let me know in the comments. This is something I'm going to clean up and I will just let my son have it to play with. So, yeah. Um, I've also got all these miscellaneous parts. Like, there's this drill weapon. I don't know if this goes with uh, that Transformer dude. It's a kind of cool weapon, though. Uh, you turn that. And these turn. And this turn. So if you turn this, those turn. Turn, turn. If you turn like this, this turns this way like that. Um, found a tooth. It's a little tooth. Yeah, don't know, uh, 
That goes to one of these guys or not? Mm, probably gonna be garbage. Found some armor, which maybe goes to one of those guys back there. Not sure. Goes over here. And then I found these miscellaneous pieces. I think this is a separate thing that goes with something else. It's a neat little piece. I may be able to use that for to decorate something. I don't know. And then this guy was very interesting. I thought this was like Giver or uh, not Giver, sorry, Pat Labor or Macross or something like that because it's very similar. But then I noticed all the decals on it say JAL, J A L, Japan Airlines. And uh, yeah, and they're like, they're fitted together like Legos. Very interesting. And I believe it's missing pieces, obviously, but this is something that's kind of cool. Like, I want to kind of clean it up and play with it. Um, Seems like he's maybe missing a lower torso or something, though, so... I don't know, maybe. Will these fit in there? No, those won't fit. Sorry, I keep going off camera, because I'm not looking through the viewfinder. The viewfinder. Jeez. The the monitor. There's no viewfinder. Is that what you call the front of your smart, smartphone? A, a viewfinder? I am filming all of these on my iPhone. Anyway, interesting. Uh, these guys, next. Um, these are die-cast metal like these are heavy very heavy i've seen these somewhere uh this guy this he reminds me of uh bikuri man or something i don't know if that's what it is uh the back of his th thing says bandai can't make up the date 1981 i don't know sorry i'm not showing stuff again there you go and uh, kind of like a robot, that back of his head's like a robot. So let me know what this is if you know. I do not know. Unfortunately, he's missing like his chomage or something. That'd be kind of cool if that was there. I guess I could put this, uh, could put this tooth in his head. There we go. That definitely doesn't go there. Now he's a unicorn. And this guy who looks like he's from one of the, uh, was it Ralph Bashki? Uh, Lord of the Rings or Hobbit animated movies. Like, it looks like Bilbo Baggins or something. It, is, is this Bilbo Baggins? Anyway, I, I kind of like it. It's kind of adorable. He's also die-cast, like I said. Um, I don't think he has any markings on him, though. His head's his head is uh, plastic. And it looks like something went here at some point, but I don't know. Do you know what this is? He looks very late 60s, early 70s, or kind of like one of those claymation uh, Christmas special characters or something. Anyway, interesting for sure. Um, before we get to the Dragon Ball, let's get to these guys. We've got uh, three Sentai. Don't know anything about Super Sentai other than they brought it over to America and called it Power Rangers and changed all of the Japanese actors to American actors, etc., etc. I do know that I like these little stickers on their chests, and I kind of dig the uniforms of these. Uh, I guess they're Space Police. Are these even Super Sentai, or are they just like some kind of another Space Police show? 1986, so these are vintage 1986. These are kind of cool. Um, they're not in too bad a condition. Like, they've still got all their stickers. Uh, they've got some scratched up feet. Man, I keep going way off the camera. I'm like looking at them with my eyeballs. I know you guys want to look at them, I'm sorry. Uh, but yeah, I clean these up. These are kind of cool. Let me know if you're interested in these guys. And I've also got this one who, who looks like he's been at the hospital. I don't know why he's taped up. Like, I don't think he's actually broken. It looks like a kid just taped him up to try to make armor or something. Very interesting. This also s s seems kind of like that Utaka plastic, but it's not quite the same. Uh, and he's got an eagle for a head. So this is one of the Maybe early 90s Super Sentai shows that I don't know about. All right, Dragon Ball. Um, actually, let's start it off here. This is related and will kind of flow into this. Uh, Dragon Quest. Uh, this is a Yutaka Dragon Quest figure. His head has been, looks like someone has tried to glue it back on. They, they used way too much glue and it still didn't even hold. But, you know... Maybe this is something I can send to uh, Toy Poloi and he can fix. I don't know. Are you up for the game? Are you up for it, Dave? I'll send it to you. Urgh! Vintage uh, Dragon Quest. Um, I actually have that figure already. I've already forgotten his name, though. 
This is what a mint condition version of that figure looks like. It's got a nice little cloth cape. Got this little thing with a jewel. I'm not a Dragon Quest fan. You already guys already know I don't play video games. Even retro games, uh, I'm not such a big gamer. But I do love this figure, and it go it matches the other Dragon Ball Yutaka figures I have. And, you know, I like cloth capes and the colors. and I like cloth capes, you know. But, yeah. Comparison. This is, uh... Oh, he still works. All right. Speaking of green Yutaka figures, I got a Piccolo, which is great because I did not have a loose uh, pick Yutaka Piccolo. I've got one mint in box with the vinyl cape and everything, and uh, really wanted a loose one because I wanted to show it in my last video uh, to compare it to the uh, bootleg, which I can do right now because I have him over here. Remember this guy? If you didn't watch that video, check it out. I'll link it at the end. He's got a splody face. But yeah, check it out. It's awesome. I got him. I just got to wash him up. Got to wash him up. Otherwise, he's not in too bad a condition. I would have paid a uh, thousand yen just for this. So that was already worth it. Uh, also, uh, we got Naked Crotch Goku. Look at that big gaping labia. Demonetized. I'm not even monetized yet, so fuck it. Um, he just needs a wash. Like, he's not in bad shape. There's his butt. This is one of those... I did a whole video on Yutaka, uh, Dragon Ball Yutaka figures. Watch that if you want to know more about these figures. Um, this is one that I had, and then I sold mine to uh, Goshen. SS Goshen 4. And uh, thought that I had one laying around somewhere, but I don't. So I'm glad that I have another loose. Uh, Crotchy Goku. Yay! Crotch! And last Yutaka of the day. i uh, got base form Goku. Which I have like two or three versions of this in different boxes and loose. So this is one that I, I'm planning on maybe fixing up. Uh, he, he's got like one arm that's kind of loose. And his hand's been taped up. I don't think it's broken. It's just, ta it's just taped up for some reason. And he's just, he's just dirty. And um, his, his wrist is probably used to repaint. Uh, and the kid that had this before like tried to tape his sticker back on. And you can even tell that he even tried to like rewrite uh, the logo for the uh, Goku Kanji. And he used, uh, what is that on the back? Maybe a newspaper? Okay, old Japanese newspaper. But yeah, it comes off, looks like that. And um, I did see this was in the bag, so I brought a comparison. So here's a minty, a minty version versus one that is dirty and played with, which that's how it should be. No, it shouldn't. Yes, it should. Okay. Uh, up next. We got full action pose. Goku! Full action pose, Goku. Uh, very loose. This figure was played with heavily. But he is like... He's not damaged. Like, he's intact. He's, 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 uh, he's faded. His boots are a bit damaged. This is another one of those things that I think could be repaired... Uh, but still, you'd have to get a new uniform f for him. Um, I don't know. Should I, should I send this one to Toy Poloi too? Uh, Dave, if I send you a bunch of Dragon Ball stuff, you have to do a Dragon Ball special. You will get, like, a whole new subscriber base. So, let me know in the comments. Should I send this to, uh, Toy Poloi? Because, you know, I don't do fix-it videos. That's his forte. So, um, here is this one next to a very mint condition one. So you can see the difference here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, still, really cool to find one of these. It's really cool to see these toys that have been played with by a kid and loved. He's also, his wristbands have been melted off. That's not good. But yeah, that's cool. And the last two figures in this little pile here is, oh god, Goku, you lost your, your scalp. We have a, uh, 1991, uh, Son Goku, Super Battle Collection, with his, his shirts missing, and Super Battle Collection, Frieza. Uh, I actually don't have a loose Super Battle Collection Frieza, so just wash this guy up, and he's added to my collection. Win. Keeper. 
And this Goku, I actually have tons of these. I'm not going to do a comparison of this. Like most people probably know what this is. Um, I have like 14 different versions of this at this point. Uh, the only problem with this one is that his, his scalp has come off. So here you go, Dave. Another one for the pile. Um, that's all for the Dragon Ball. Let's open up this last little ratty pile of Saint Seiya. All right. Um, I'm not a Saint Seiya collector. I vaguely am familiar with Saint Seiya. I've watched like the first episode of the original series. I do know that it is very beloved, especially in South America. For um, I guess it was aired there. It wasn't aired in the U.S. from when I was a kid. We had like Ronin Warriors. At least I never saw it on TV in the U.S. Um, but I have friends in Mexico that always ask me if I can find this stuff. So here you go, guys. This is probably not the best lot, but let's talk about it. I don't know any of the characters' names. Let's take two at a time. So um, I am familiar with somewhat with these these figures. These were produced uh, by Bandai in the mid '80s, early to late '80s, mid '80s, somewhere around time around then. Um, and they use a very similar kind of uh, body sculpt to the uh, full action pose Dragon Ball figures, but these obviously came first, uh, and they're smaller. Um, and Bandai reused this also for their Fist of the North Star line, which was also upscaled a bit. Um, I've done a comparison video at some point in one of my previous videos. The only difference about these guys is that they had removable armor and they had die cast feet, uh, which kind of weighs them down. But I guess that also caused their uh, legs to go very loose over time from all that weight on their feet. So now they all look like marionettes. So, I don't know who these guys are, but if you do, let me know. I'm sure most of you guys that know Saint Seiya know who these guys are. And one thing that's kind of interesting, again, here, is that the, the kid that played with these tried to give them his own armor. I assume that he lost or broke most of the armor. So, he's used tape and foil and probably wrapping paper to recreate the, uh, the, uh, the armor for these guys. Very interesting. Uh, same thing here. Um, this one... We even have some uh, homemade weapons. Looks like he's got uh, some kind of axe or something. He's got um, this little bit of armor here made with like toothpicks. That's kind of cool. It's kind of cool to see this. He's got his arm taped up. He still does have uh, part of his armor on his leg. This one actually has plastic feet, so this must be from a, a different line. Uh, he's got a shield still. And uh, he's also got like a wooden splint. Interesting. All right, and uh, this guy, he's got a rope all around him. We're going to call him Ropey. Hi. Hi, Ropey. Um, we have an arm. Here's some armor that I was talking about before. Uh, die cast uh, belt armor, whatever you would call this dangly things. Um, and it looks like this opens up. I bet this armor is probably worth something on its own. Um, yeah, it's very heavy. This piece is. Let me know if you're missing some pieces. If you want to, if anyone wants to buy this lot just for some pieces, let me know. I will not be using this lot. And here's the helmet to one of the characters. Very nice helmet. This this is actually not die cast. It's it's just plastic. I uh, found another piece. This I think this goes with uh, this guy. So I'll put that over here with him. Uh, let's save those two. We've got uh, some more dudes with some homemade. Ah, oh, found your arm over there, bud. Ooh, cool. Uh, he's got an Ultimate C, uh, like a vitamin drink, uh, cap as a shield. It's been taped to his arm. He has the protection of vitamin C. No coronavirus is going to stop him. Does vitamin C protect against coronavirus? I don't know. Bloop. And he has... What is that? What is this? Not sure what that is. He's got something else. This kid just used whatever he had. Is that a button? He's got a button or something for the other arm, or is that a is that a uh, washer? I think that's a washer. Yeah. And the last two in this lot: the Green Man and Homemade Red Armor Man. Yeah, this is not his uh, armor that he came with. This is all red foil or 
rip wrapping paper that the kid has uh, custom fit to this character. It's kind of neat to see. I wonder if the uh, these are actually the sellers when from when he, when he was a kid, or the uh, sellers' parents throwing out his old stuff. Very curious. They all have a little story. They're all very grimy and dirty too. That's it. All right, guys. So there we have it. Uh, there was roughly 40 figures in that lot. These are just some of my favorites uh, from that entire little uh, bag of goodies. And um, all in all, for a thousand yen, ten dollars, uh, like I said, this piccolo alone was worth that to me. And the, the fact that I got um, uh, most of these are I'm gonna keep. So the fact that I got all of these. Uh, for a thousand yen amazing. That's why I love junk bags and I will continue to keep doing them uh, So I hope you like this video. Make sure you like it. Please like it. Most people don't see my videos I don't get a lot of views um, Like it that helps subscribe if you haven't already if you don't have a YouTube account. It's easy. Just use your Gmail Get a Gmail account subscribe. I know a lot of people that tell me they watch my videos But they're not they don't have YouTube so they don't subscribe. No excuse Gmail's free YouTube's free It helps please I'm this close to being monetized, which I know won't really pay a lot because YouTube is not paying very much. Uh, but, hey, please support me in any way you can. Also, if you would like to buy any of the other stuff that I'm putting up for sale, I will be posting it uh, in my groups that I run, the Dragon Ball uh, Vintage Collectors Group and the Instagram that I run. I was going to mention the other group that I run, but... None of this would go in there. Yeah, so Dragon Ball Vintage Collectors on Facebook, link below. And follow me on Instagram, uh, at Tokyo Toy Bastard. Uh, I will be putting up a lot of the random little lots, after I clean them, of course, up there. So yeah, that's it, guys. I will see you in the next video, and I'll be talking about a special little uh, lot of Evangelion figures that I just got in. Super, super excited about that. Until then, adios.